I just had to share this beautiful case with you that uh, Antonina Kalmakova from CSD Healthcare has allowed me to see. It really is a, a great case. Uh, and we're, what we're doing is we're facing the problem of how to deal with a, a subepidermal blister. In this example, the, the blister is relatively cell-free. Now, I don't have any clinical information, but I'll create some that would be reasonably accurate. So this patient is, a, is going to be an elderly patient, and there are going to be tense uh, blisters on the extremities and on the abdominal wall. So how, how do we approach this? Now, I have made a, a separate video talking about these lesions in a more general sense, but I just want to focus on this one in a more specific way. So what do we see? Well, we can see a little bit of hyperkeratosis, and then there's a, a blister cavity which looks subepidermal, and the dermal papillae, are sticking up to the into the blister cavity and as I've mentioned before this is sometimes called festooning. Now what's the differential diagnosis at this point? Well um, I suppose the most likely diagnosis is going to be bullous pemphigoid because it's the most common commonly encounter of such blistering dermatoses. But uh, this could be a cutaneous manifestation of mucosal pemphigoid, which sometimes occurs. Other differential diagnoses would include uh, epidermolysis bullosa acquisita, and I suppose the pseudoperphyria or porphyria and the pseudoperphyria conditions might uh, merit thinking about. So let's look at this at high magnification, and you're really going to love it. It's just so good. Now look at that. A perfect subepidermal blister. The roof's intact. Blister cavity contains a little bit of fibrin and a few inflammatory cells. But the reason I'm showing this to you is because it beautifully demonstrates some residual basement membrane going right the way along the base of the blister cavity and covering the tips of the dermal papillae. And you very rarely see that. Um, but this, in this particular instance, this makes the diagnosis child's play because bullous pemphigoid develops in the lamina lucida, which is the space between the cell membrane of the basal keratinocyte and the basement membrane which is composed of type 4 collagen. So in this particular blister the split is within lamina lucida. So you don't need to do any any clever immunohistochemistry for basement membrane stains. You don't need to do a PAS. It is what it is. Um, even if you didn't have immunofluorescence, to be honest with you, if this is a patient um, with blisters as I've described, well then the only diagnosis that's really tenable is bullous pemphigoid. And we'll look at this at higher power. You see there's a, there's a few inflammatory cells, mostly looks like lymphocytes, maybe there is the odd eosinophil and some red blood cells and there's fibrin. Now, look at that. That is just per Oh, there, there's an eosinophil there. It's perfect. That's the basement membrane, the lamina densa. If we did immunohistochemistry, this would be outlined heavily by type 4 collagen. There's another eosinophil there and possibly another one there. Now, oh, and there's some more eosinophils there and there. But I want to make the point to you, be careful with eosinophils. We tend to think of them as being something we see in bullous pemphigoid, but you can see them in later lesions um, of, um, uh, of dermatitis or petiformis. 
and eosinophils may certainly be a feature in the context of this case uh, in um, inflammatory epidermolysis below the requisitor. For that matter, they may also be seen in linear IgA disease. Now, any, is there anything else? Well, I, I did mention the porphyrias and pseudoporphyria, and there are the vessels. You can see them very nicely, and there's no evidence of basement membrane reduplication or thickening, uh, which you'd expect to see in those latter two conditions. So I think we can rule those out. Uh, by virtue of the basement membrane's lo localization, we can rule out epidermolysis bullosa acquisita. So it's not just a great case. Um, I think there's nothing else to show you. I just was so excited by this basement membrane that I thought I've just got to make a video. So I hope that's been of some interest uh, and indeed so some excitement. Thank you very much for your attention.